Tell you what, just uh, recently talked to Bill Shorten, but not when this comes out. But the point is, I did. Jealous. Do you remember who he is? It's uh, what you think about politics, isn't it? <clears throat> Look, what I will say about the man is he has mastered how to win friends and influence people. I think you got it afterwards. Bill Shorten shines in your mind when you meet him. And it makes perfect sense why he didn't shine on camera. Because he's an extremely self-effacing human being. I have never met somebody as modest as Bill Shorten. He doesn't want to take credit for anything. Everything. Even saving people from a collapsed mine. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, there was other, there was other people that were digging them out. I was just organising the entire thing and getting the press there to uh, make sure that the company was staying on their heels and actually got them out. I mean, I, what did I do in that situation? I did absolutely nothing. All I did was organise the entire rescue effort. So he is an extremely self-effacing man. That is, in real life, going to win you a lot of friends. And it makes a lot of sense because... Look at his wife. She's so hot. And she's rich too. He lucked out and comes from royal family in Australia, which comes to people that pack mushrooms for a living. But the thing is that she's from a super rich family. Mum became the Governor General. I think under a Liberal government as well. Super connected family. Pretty much the Kennedys. He married into it. So it's kind of like if he was in the US and Whoever the fuck Arnold Schwarzenegger is married to <laughs> chose Bill Shorten instead. And I do think that it comes down to some fundamentals when he met you. And I just want to highlight this for everybody else as just a template. This is how you schmooze. This is a man that really understands how to get people on side. And that is why he is just so good and was opposition leader for six years in an extremely fraught environment, which is the Australian Labor Party. Yes, granted, Kevin Rudd's law changes did help, but those things are kind of just written on paper, right? In terms of leadership, in terms of keeping a major party together on the same foot while there was three prime ministers, ah, my back, and then while that guy is falling down and the other guy is polishing out his knife, surprise motherfucker, scamos in the house. <clears throat> While that was all happening, Bill Shorten was floating at the top. And after the second one, he gracefully stood down and thought, okay, all right, I have my go. Uh, he's a class act, and I really do think that he is one of these people that thinks that there is a movement that is bigger than him, and that is a key to success in itself in real life. The, the fact that that guy came so close twice in an entire media ecosystem designed to trip him up, and he still only lost by a couple of seats here and there, despite having some of the most powerful enemies in the country, there is a lot to learn from this man. The one thing that I will say that he has to learn from me, uh, Kevin Wright, is that he should be extremely boastful on camera, but that is not real life. When you're on camera, you're supposed to be big, grandiloquent. The reason that those miners were saved is because of me! No other! They should be my butlers in servitude. I hope they are Bill Shorten's butlers in servitude. They definitely deserve that. But. Uh, yes, no, he's really in it for the movement. He really likes helping people. You can tell from speaking to him. He's not in the same category as some of the other politicians that I've spoken to, and I'm not going to name names, but he... Kevin Rudd isn't one of them, by the way. I really do like Kevin Rudd. I think he's a legend. But, he, you know, he's obviously a little more fucking boastful <laughs> than Bill Shorten is. And I do think that that is what tripped him up. Those couple of seats was just the fact that he was... Always kind of just, it's the same reason, I'll get into this now, I suppose, the same reason that he kind of failed in public is why he succeeds so thoroughly in private. It's very hard to hear a bad word about Bill Short for people inside the labour and union movement, particularly when you're lower down. When you get higher up and they want your position, obviously they're going to bitch about you. But lower down, it's always, if Bill Shorten says he's going to do something, he does it. He listens to you. There's a few things that he does seamlessly. As soon as he enters the room, just like Theodore Roosevelt used to do, he would ask what the person that he was meeting with was interested in, and then he would read a book about that. Say that they liked bird watching, he'd read about bird watching the day before. That's what he did as soon as he entered the room. It was insane. Every other person that I've ever met that's important, all they want to do is talk about themselves. And fair enough, they've earned it, right? But when it comes to Bill Shorten, as soon as he came in, the first thing he did was just be like, can I take a selfie with you? My daughter loves you. This is my son. I flew him down from Melbourne just to meet you because he's a fan. So straight off the mark, so ingrained. This guy was almost prime minister. 
And he's talking to a little sycophant like me, like I'm more important than the guy that brought about the Royal Banking Commission, right? Then the next thing he just starts talking about is like, I really like this video, I watch this video, I'm a fan, I listen to the podcast. What the hell? All, you are completely taken off when that happens. Like, because anyone else that walks through, you just think they're just so busy and being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's, what's your name again? Who are you? And then they just move on with their day just talking about how awesome they are. And I'm perfectly happy to sit there and listen to it. But it does really pay dividends to make someone feel like they're special. That's how you schmooze. It's actually Paul Keating's quote that anyone who thinks that flattery doesn't work has never been flattered. You know, putty in his hands, straight off the mark. I really don't understand how, it actually is a testament, it's the one thing that I will say to journalists uh, that I hate, I will give them this, God, it must have been hard writing hit pieces about that man. I can guarantee you he was doing exactly the same thing to all of them. Uh, so he was talking about videos, he was giving specific examples of why he liked my videos, so he clearly had done his homework. Um, you know, like, I'm sure he has more important things to do in his life, but he understands that to get someone on site, the best way to do it, you look at Joe Biden, you look at Theodore Roosevelt, all of these great leaders, the first thing that they want to do is ingratiate the other person. They want to show that the other person is respected. They want to say a couple of things about them that they know, and they want to put it in a positive light. When you're speaking to Bill Shorten, every opportunity he can, I can't believe that he's able to do this. As an opposition leader, I thought about this. I remember watching him and thinking, wow, he's really not hammering the opponents like you would imagine an opposition leader would do. He's always trying to push it. You know, I just want to be fair. And I do think that it is, that is his immediate habitual outlook on life. He is always looking for the good in every situation. And it's just a nice vibe to be around. It's, as soon as he was in the room, conversation just flows better. And he doesn't want to be in the spotlight of it. He's just there to try and keep it going. And this is something that I hear people that have exceptional social skills, they say this all the time, that they're just there to facilitate the conversation. They are not trying to hog the limelight like myself. But look, I'm in the perfect job to do that, aren't I? I should be able to do that. I, <laughs> I've worked my entire life to just be like, get that spotlight, move out of the way, take it, I'll put it there, ah, oh, my eyes. They fall, they go on fire, like those robots in The Simpsons. No! Yes, that's going to work on camera. But in real life, being that humble, just being there to facilitate other people having a good time, which is really what his focus was there. I think that his entire philosophy seems to be underpinning, and this is what I got out of him in the questioning. It is very Christian. He seems to be of this mindset that everyone's time is valuable and everyone should be respected. Like that, that, is, that is really core to Bill Shorten and you can definitely tell from it. The other thing, this is something else that my techies were telling me about, <laughs> my underlings, <laughs> in, a talk, in a talk about respect. Well, they're my friends, I don't really do like them. They're also my slaves, but my slaves, <laughs> I'm just fucking around. I know that I'm going to get a talk from one of them and go, do you actually think that? No. Uh, if, if more, anything else, they boss me around the most anyway, so I'm the real victim in this situation. The guy that they help relentlessly around a 24-hour day, seven-day week time frame. Um, yes. All of them, when Bill Shorten was in the room, were respected. He wanted to know about them. If he didn't know anything about them, he wanted to learn things about them. Now, when we've interviewed other people that are important, some of them do that, and people have always said to me, they know who is and isn't a good person by the person that just goes right past the tech crew and then just walks up to me. Because the tech crew are there, they are in the room, and it's very easy to just go to each and every one of them and say, hi, how are you doing? My name's, like, not even assuming that you know who they are, I mean, who in Australia doesn't know who Kevin Rudd is? He did that. So did Bill Shorten. They show a lot of modesty and courtesy in real life. I think that the final thing that Bill Shorten did 
is even if you're extremely, like the thing is, Bill Shorten does have the capacity to do it. He's much more intelligent than I am, way smarter than I am. I mean, all politicians are, but that's not a good frame of reference. It's kind of just like saying, oh, he's so much smarter than a hippopotamus. But of all the other politicians that I've met, it does make a lot of sense why Kevin Rudd and Bill Shorten were leaders because they, you can just tell that their intellect is just at another level. Um, Despite that, and despite being funnier than I am, despite because it, usually intelligence and humour come hand in hand. I came up with that metaphor because my hands were together. <laughs> usually those two things collide. Doesn't necessarily have to, case in point, Miss Love, but who, by the way, there is a great little Easter egg in that interview if you haven't checked it out about him. But a lot of the times, if you are able to make incisive observations, that comes from being a smart person and he got some jokes underneath me. He could have really torn me to shreds if he wanted to. He had ample opportunities to do so, he didn't. Every single time he was looking for a way to build the other person up. This is all very basic stuff but I think the question is, uh, except for the very rare instance that is my life which is built entirely off of tearing people down. <laughs> For the greater good though. And that's what I'm saying, is like you employ what you are strong with to great effect. But I think that in a leadership position, unless you are looking for that X factor, that wow factor, you really should be learning a lot from Bill Shorten. There is a big reason why Bill Shorten just skyrocketed up the union movement and then moved straight into a key position in the Labor Party. Right off the bat, there's serious talent in what he's able to do. And it really comes down to those fundamentals of a genuine curiosity and constant wanting to prop up others while shirking away from the spotlight yourself. These are things that are really ingrained into Bill Shorten. And that's what I learned from Meechid Hit. Anyway, I do, <laughs> I do really like the guy. I Honestly, every Labour politician that I've met I do think is a legend. This is what you expect from politicians because they're kind of leaders of society and it is a very schmoozy job. So you do expect them to stand out. So a politician that stands out in your mind, that's something worth talking about, especially because I can put his name in it. And I imagine that that would do above average in the algorithm because people that like me like the Labour Party. Anyway, that was all just very Machiavellian and here's the extra dose of Machiavellianism, you can sign up to my exclusive Patreon where you will get membership and get all these other reminders and insider scoops into how to profit off it. I, look, if you are part of that, the $2 a week that you're paying for membership will pay dividends in your life. I am living proof of it. I get testimony all the time from people that are saying, this is worth it. Thank you so much for listening even if you're a cheapskate. Leave the ads on at the very least. <laughs>